In this lab, we will be using a flower classification problem. This problem is an example of supervised machine learning where the model is trained from examples that contain labels. These are the steps we will be performing in this lab. Firstly, we will log in to our Google Cloud account. We will then create a user managed Jupyter notebook from Vertex AI Workbench. We will write a Python code for training flowers classification dataset using TensorFlow with the Keras library. We will then compile our model and check the accuracy. And finally, we will save the model results to cloud storage. Here is the solution diagram for this lab. Our first step is to go to the workbench inside the Vertex AI console and then create a Jupyter Notebook instance. If you do not have a Google Cloud account, you need to click on Get Started for free. Since I have an account, I'll click on Sign In. First, we need to make sure that our Vertex AI API is enabled. Now check your IAM permissions. You need to have Vertex AI admin, AI platform admin and storage admin roles in your service account. Now go to the Vertex AI page. Click on workbench. We can see that it has prompted us to enable the Notebooks API. Click on Enable Notebooks API. So our API has been enabled. In the User Manage Notebooks tab, click on New Notebook. Choose TensorFlow Enterprise. And I'm selecting the version 2.8 and without the GPU. The TensorFlow Enterprise option means that all the libraries come pre-installed with our notebook. Now give a name to the notebook. Choose the region. I will choose US East 1. Verify all the details and click on Create. And here you can see all the details of the notebook and it has the basic info, health, monitoring and logs tabs. Now click on open Jupyter lab button and this will take you to the Jupyter notebook lab. Now here we can see the various options for the notebooks and terminals. First we'll create a folder named My Notebooks and inside this folder we'll create a new notebook. So this is how our Python notebook looks like. So our next step in this lab is to train our dataset with TensorFlow using the Keras library. So let's perform this step. Now let's first look at our flower classification dataset that comes with the open source TensorFlow datasets. So this is a labeled dataset called TF underscore flowers. We have two features which are an image and a label. These are some example images and their labels. Now let's head back to our notebook. So first we'll import all the libraries we we'll need for this lab. Now we will load the tf underscore flowers dataset and store it in the data variable. So this is downloading the dataset. Next, we will specify the number of epochs number of classes and dataset size. Now we will look at all the names of the labels we are using for classification. Then we will use a function for pre-processing the data 
which will include resizing it to 150 cross 150 size. And this will return the image and the label. We resize an image to a lower dimension in order to deal with the computing limitations. Now we will create a train and validation split for our data set. So first we are shuffling the data set. Then we are creating an 80 percent train split and validation split is 20 percent. Then we get the train size by multiplying train split with the data set size and same with the validation size. Then we take the train data from the data set and then call the preprocess data function to preprocess the training data. Then for taking the validation data, we skip the train size from the data. Now we will define our actual tensorflow.keras model. First we are specifying the input to the model. After that, we use the rescaling function that rescales every input value within the range of 0 to 255 converting it to grayscale image. Then we have the convolutional 2D layer which are the convolutional layers dealing with the input images which are two dimensional. The number of nodes for the first convolutional layer are 16, the kernel size is 3 meaning that we have a 3 cross 3 filter matrix and then we have the activation function of ReLU or rectified linear activation. After that we have a max pooling 2D layer which down samples the input in terms of width and height. Then we have our second convolutional 2D layer having 32 nodes and a kernel size of 3. We then repeat the conf 2D and max pooling layers after which we use the flattened layer and after that there is a dense layer which is a fully connected neural network layer whose neurons connect to all the preceding keras layers. Here our dense layer has 128 nodes and the ReLU activation function. Then we are using the dense layer for our output taking in the number of classes and the softmax activation function. The softmax activation function makes the output sum up to 1 so the output can be interpreted as probabilities. The model will then make its prediction based on which option has the highest probability. Finally, we are saving our model to the model variable with the inputs and the outputs. Now we are ready to compile our model. The model compile function will take three parameters which are the optimizer, loss and matrix. We are using the Adam optimizer for our model which adjusts the learning rate throughout the model training. Our loss function is sparse categorical cross entropy which is a cross entropy used for multi-label classification. A lower score of the loss would indicate that the model is performing better. Then we are specifying the accuracy metric to see the accuracy score on the validation data set when we train the model. We can also plot our Keras model using the keras.utils.plot model function. This will generate an image of the model. So here we have the input layer, then rescaling layer, conf 2D, max pooling, then conf 2D and max pooling are repeating again. And after that we have the flatten layer, dense layer and the dense output layer. Now we are ready to fit the model for training. We will take in the train data, validation data and the number of epochs which we specified as 10. So when we run this, our model training starts. We have 10 epochs. The number of epochs is the number of times the model will cycle through the data. Each epoch has 46 iterations. When one epoch completes, the model parameters get updated based on the loss function. So we can see that with each epoch, 
our accuracy gets improved. So, after the completion of all 10 epochs, you can see that our training accuracy is 96 percent and validation accuracy is 94 percent, which is a very significant amount. Now, let us plot our results. For that, we will import the matplotlib.py plot library to find the parameters for the plot and show the loss and accuracy for the training and validation. So, when we run this, we can see our plot and we can see that our training and validation accuracies are closely aligned, meaning that the model is unlikely to be overfit. Our final step of the lab is to save our trained model to the Google Cloud Storage Bucket. So, let us do that. To save our trained model to our workspace, we will use the model.save. Inside that, we have a model output. When we run this, we can see that a model output folder has been created in our workspace. Then we will save the model to the cloud storage bucket folder. Here we are specifying the bucket name, the URI of the bucket and then the URI to the bucket folder. Now, I will give this folder link inside the model.save function. Now, let us check our Google Cloud Storage bucket where our model has been saved. So, we can see the files generated inside our TensorFlow folder. I hope this lab was helpful in giving you an understanding of how to use Jupyter Notebooks on Vertex AI to create and train a TensorFlow model for image classification problem. If you have any queries or concerns, do not forget to reach out in the comments. Thank you and have a nice day.